Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be building the Articat water plane by Hobby King. Since this is a kit airplane, I will have to supply my own electronics and parts. So for this build, here are the parts I will be using. A 6x4 inch Durafly ME163 prop, a Multistar V-Spec 1808 to 2400 kV racer series brushless outrunner motor, an orange R615X 6 channel receiver to be paired with my orange T6 transmitter, a Tower Pro 9 gram metal gear servo, two generic plastic gear 9 gram servos, and the star of the show, the Aerostar RVS 40 amp electronic speed controller with reverse function. This speed controller can enable me to activate reverse thrust on my water plane. Those were the electronic components used in the build and these are what I'm going to use to build the, um, the Hobby King Articat. Okay, after taking the pieces out of the box, this is what I have. All of these pieces are pre-cut already. I was very sure that I had to cut them out out of like a big piece of foam board, almost like a stencil. But this is already, everything is already pre-cut and the graphics are already labeled. Let's take this out of the plastic now. Alright, so now everything is out of the plastic and this is it. Oh, here we have the motor mount. Very nice. Very glad I don't have to punch anything out from this myself. And yeah, this is the horizontal stabilizer. I'm sorry, the vertical stabilizer thing. Yeah, all very nice. Unfortunately, there are no instructions in the box. So I guess just like my AXN, I have to go online for instructions. All right, so after looking and examining my pieces, I've realized that they all come with their control surfaces already attached. So that's very good. I don't have to worry any bit about that. Anyway, our first step in assembling the Hobby King Articat is I have to glue this piece here. I have to glue this horizontal fuselage together with hot glue. So I'll do that now. Now I'm going to glue this carbon tube into the this groove right here on the wing. While the glue on my carbon tube is drying, I am going to install some flat carbon strips onto the vertical stabilizers of the Articat. Now the Hobby King Articat comes with four flat carbon strips and two, ha two have the same size and two don't. That means that a pair are shorter than the other two. The instructions do not say which one of the shorter carbon strips to use but after eyeballing the picture, I'm going to use the shorter of the two carbon strips to attach to the vertical stabilizer. And I will be using my foam glue to do this. Okay, so I'm having difficulty securing the carbon strips to the vertical stabilizer while the glue dries so I'm going to be using tape to hold the carbon strips onto the vertical stabilizer while the glue dries. Oh, 
Okay, so I have finished gluing and taping down one of the vertical stabilizers with the carbon strip. So I was correct in using this shorter of the two pairs of um, carbon strips. So when you guys open your Hobby King Articat, you're gonna see pair of vertical stable. Um, you're gonna see a pair of carbon rods, and see these are two here. You're going to notice that one pair is shorter than the other pair. Use the shorter of the two pairs for the vertical stabilizer. Now I'm finished one. Time to put on the other one. Okay. Uh, Flat carbon spars have been added to both vertical stabilizers and I just realized that I skipped, an I skipped a step. The horizontal here, the outside of here, also needs the um, flat carbon spars to be attached to it. Um, these, the longer of the two pairs of carbon spars will be used for this step. Um, I don't think I'll show you. Yeah, I think I'll show you. I'll show you. I show. Okay, so I have placed the carbon strip along the uh, outside of the horizontal fuselage and yeah, this worked out really really nicely. This process was a lot easier than putting it onto the uh, vertical stabilizers like this one. Um, as usual, I put tape to secure it while it's drying and especially in the crooks here where um, the plate where the fuselage angles the most ensure you put pressure there to ensure that the glue contacts with the carbon spars because as you can see right now the carbon spar is not touching the foam at all so just make sure you put pressure there and I haven't and now I'm going to put carbon on the other side of the fuselage all of the carbon spars have been installed and now we go on to the next step which is to assemble the, as the horizontal nose and wing using hot glue. Okay, that was relatively painless. Now the next step is to assemble, yes, get this piece and then we're going to assemble the nose. This goes over here, this side. Okay, this is just for demonstration purposes, but I'm gonna use it like this. I'm gonna glue in like this. So I'm going to do that with the hot glue now. Now I'm going to assemble the nose bulkhead with hot glue. These are the parts I'm going to be using, and as you see, these pieces here have the scores, that means I can take these bits out. So, very carefully and they install in here. Alright, that was easy. Let's continue. Okay, so the instructions were wrong. They said to glue the plane together like this. And this is not how you're supposed to glue the plane together. This close piece is supposed to be in the front. This is supposed to be this piece here, which is the back, is supposed to be the front. Because this piece is supposed to fit here, but it clearly doesn't. But here it clearly does. So while I'm figuring out how to remove this, let's continue with the build and put together everything else that doesn't require the fuselage. 
Okay, continuing along with these unreliable instructions, I'm going to glue the vertical tail and rudder together. Okay, so these bits of foam here need to be glued together. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, after way too long, I have removed, I have disassembled the fuselage and this nose bulkhead from this bottom piece here. Now I have written on it, you can see that says top and I have an arrow pointing to where the front of the airplane is supposed to be. So yeah, now to glue this all back and basically start over. But before I can actually complete and put everything back together, we have this to contend with. So remember I had shaved off the sides of this. Yeah, I actually need a full size piece now. Luckily for me, the kit included some scrap foam. I'm not sure if there's a scrap, but it's not labeled or anything. And I don't see any obvious use for it. So this is some scrap foam here. I am going to remove this piece, trace out the top, and then I will make it wide. I'm not sure how wide it's supposed to be, but I'll make it at least as wide as this piece here. Again, I'm not sure how wide it's supposed to be. Um, oh! Actually, I know how wide this is supposed to be. This piece here is supposed to fit right at the edge here, right at the step. And that's when the plane continues to go narrow. And this piece attaches up here. So in theory, this piece and this piece should be the same width. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure this piece across and I'm going to get this notch at the top. Ah, two times the charm I suppose. So after taking the fuselage apart, I put it back together and re-glued it. As you can see, this is the fat piece here and this is the skinnier piece up in front here. Uh, let's see if you can see from here, zoom out. Eh, yeah, well, you're out of focus. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and after a test fit, I can see that this piece back here fits very nicely. Yeah, so I suppose the lesson of the day is when you're building something, test fit it. Uh, where is this piece here? The piece for this bulkhead here. Um, I don't think I'm going to glue it in, but I cut this from scrap foam and I measured it this width and then I realize oh but wait um, the foam the foam for the fuselage out here will have to fit on the outside sorry will fit on top so I took the width of the foam I took the width of this minus the thickness of the foam and I came up with this size then I realized oh wait there's another backstop or whatever and this backstop is already cut the length so ta-da! Oh yes, this is the front down nose thing um, I guess I'm gonna glue this in place now let's see if it fits ah, of course it fits this is the right piece for the front here okay, 
I am going to continue this process and I'll check in with you guys later. Alright, so this is glued in. I only glued the back because this is the waterproof joint. Sorry, this is the part that will be encountering the water the most. Or actually, I don't think I would. Yeah. Yeah, this part will be encountering the water the most. And now to glue this piece on now. Now that I've switched around the, the fuselage, this piece fits on properly. Now we're looking like an airplane now, almost. Uh, I have some concerns about in here. And as you see, you still have some gaps in there, and water can definitely get in here. See here? Yeah, water can definitely get in there. So, I have concerns. We'll see how this goes. Alright, we have zoomed out a lot because now that we have this fuselage finished, we have to install it onto the wing. So, yeah, let's see how this goes. Right. Okay, so the reason why I was having some difficulty just now was because uh, this notch did not clear the side, the side of the fuselage just now. So when you're slipping your wing on your fuselage, ensure that this notch clears the fuselage here. So let's check it. It's, it's all the way up. And it's all the way up back here. So these pegs can fit through the holes. Okay, so in that short break, I um, I push the pegs from the bulkhead up into the into the horizontal wing. So let's zoom in so you guys can see that better. Peg here. Peg here. This peg that goes across, here, here, peg that goes across here, um, there are pegs, whoops, you can't see that, there are pegs coming up into the wing here, and there are also pegs on top of this horizontal, on top of this fuselage here going down into the wing here and here. So I did not glue them in because reasons. I may or may not have to pull this apart to do this all over again. But yeah, on to the next step. Alright, so now this piece, this famous piece, we have to install. Um, I also have to install more dam boards. These are called dam boards by the way. I have to install four more of them and I only see this one. Okay, here is another one. Um, this might be another one. Three. And this might be another one. Okay, four down boards. Now this is the motor monk down board. I, um, I will um, glue this one in. Okay, so the instruction says install four piece dam boards, but I only see three dam boards. Three pieces of foam that can work as dam boards. This piece here, with a notch in the middle here, and this square piece that just fits in. This notch piece fits into a notch in here, and this just slides into here. I'm putting this square piece 
on this line here. All right, I'm done. Now, according to instructions, I have to assemble the vertical tail, vertical rudder, and let's see, wing fences. But I already did that while trying to figure out how to do the fuselage. So now it's time to just install these into the fuselage. So the tail. Let's see, the tail should go on first. Okay, so the instructions have failed me yet again. So I am about to create my hinge for the tail. Sorry, I'm about to attach my vertical stabilizer to the rudder. And I put it together like this. And I'm like, if I tape this side, the rudder can turn here. But how is it going to turn on the other side? So the, what sh I should do, or what the instructions should have said, is that I have to bevel it. Bevel, see you put them together and then you bevel, sorry, bevel the two sides like this. Or if you have the tail on the other side, bevel the two sides like this. Or you could, or um, the word is also called a chamfer. Yeah, it's a transitional cut between two straight edges. So, just gonna bevel either side. I'm gonna bevel it on this side. Bevel 45 degrees, and then I'm going to tape it. So, okay, now that we have beveled the edges, see these edges here. And here is beveled. What I'm going to do now is turn this over and tape it. But before I tape it, I'm going to leave a little space between. This looks like the right amount of space to leave between. And what I'm going to do is tape. Tape that down. As soon as I put the tape. So you think this might be able to work? Yeah. Okay, well, I could always recut it. Now that that's done, turn it over. Actually, yeah, this is what I have to do. Fold it, fold the hinge back on itself Ta -da. then whoops okay that piece is no good Try this again. I took off that piece of tape and I reapplied and I got a new piece of tape because the previous piece was covering a lot of hair and it would not have reached to come over here. Right, so I just need to knit up a bit, but my vertical stabilizer and my rudder are finished. Um, these are my maximum throws for right rudder, but left can go all the way over. Of course, it wouldn't go all the way over because my servo is going to be here. But yeah, these are my. This is this is the maximum throw I can get for right rudder, and I guess I'll mirror it on the other side. Yeah, that's it. Now to install the rudder to the airplane now. Yeah, now we're going to install these uh, vertical stabilizers on the wing. Okay, so the vertical stabilizers install like this. 
it hold and this goes on the outside of the wing because of this see that all right so let's put this on the outside of the wing Alright, um, yeah, so now this is whatever step you guys saw me do is finished. We're going to install this piece on top here. Okay, so earlier in the build, I had glued this stuff together. Yeah, I should not have done that because these go on the outside here. So since both this piece and these pieces occupy the same hole, I am going to just fully glue everything in now. Alright, now I'm going to install this piece, which is called a tail fence, up here. And this piece slots in right here. And let's see how far back this goes. Okay, this goes all the way back to the horizontal, onto the hinge for the rudder. So I'm going to put some hot glue in here. Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to flip the plane upside down. and install wing fences that would be these two lovely pieces of foam right here and they go in like this I'm just doing a test fit to see where exactly they go alright let's see how this works because the dry fit was unsuccessful Alright, that's done. Now for the other side. And that this concludes part one of the Hobby King Articat build. Uh, subscribe to see part two of the Hobby King Articat build. Um, while that is still in the works, be sure to check out other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.